Good day, my friend. It's Dr. Ray from the Fit Father Project and the Fit Mother Project. In today's video, we're gonna cover my top five favorite muscle building exercises for people over 40. And this video version is gonna be only using dumbbells. You can do all these exercises at home. And I love this because dumbbells are one of the best muscle building tools after age 40. And when we're building muscle after 40, we wanna make sure we're picking exercises that feel good on our bodies, are easy on our joints, work the targeted muscles, and can be done in a pretty quick and convenient way. And all the exercises in today's list fit that bill. Now we're gonna to get to exercise number one in just a moment. I just need to give you a little forecast. I'm also gonna give you an idea on obviously the proper form, but the right number of sets and reps to do per workout and per week. Because I recommend you do these strength training workouts if you're not already, around twice per week. Maybe three times, but train, rest a few days, train again. On those days you're resting, walk, do some cardio, do some stretching. Because after 40, we don't need to train as frequently with the strength training. We wanna stimulate and then recover and stimulate again. And on that note, let's get into the first exercise on this list. Exercise number one is the dumbbell deadlift. And you probably know that deadlifts are among the best muscle building exercises, and it's totally true. They are a whole body motion that obviously work your legs, your glutes, your hamstrings, but also your core, your back, your arms, and they help correct your posture. And the reason I think it's best to do dumbbell deadlifts after age 40 is it's typically easier on your back. And you can really align the dumbbells and do the postural flow in a way that feels really good on your body. So here's the deal, here's how you do this exercise. First off, you address the dumbbells. And depending on the type of dumbbells, the dumbbells can be over your feet or they can be at the sides of your feet. And I want you to really focus on squeezing your hands hard with the dumbbells and maintaining roughly a shoulder width stance. Squeeze those weights hard and start to slack out. What this means is the subtle motion of beginning to move the weights up, creating tension in your posterior chain, your glutes, your hamstrings, and your back. And now start to stand up, and at halfway through the motion, squeeze your glutes and finish on through. On the way down, keep that tension in your core, keep that straight spine, and just unwind the motion. Start to come down, unwind, unwind, unwind. Dumbbells come down, they may touch the floor, they may hover, pause for a second, turn around. On the turnaround, I want you to be very intentional about starting to make a strong motion, somewhat explosive, but be careful out of the bottom of the hole as you're coming out. But I definitely want you to squeeze your glutes and those arms super hard all the way through the motion and lower on down. Now, you can see me continuing to do some form here. It's really great. And I also wanna to talk to you in terms of like the sets and reps that I recommend as you do this. In any given workout, I think it's a good idea to do three sets at the minimum, up to maybe six sets. And you can train this in a rep range of six reps up to 12 plus reps. Now, I want to say for muscle building, I find that these deadlifts are very good in a lower rep range using very heavy dumbbells. So if you can do, let's just say four sets of six to eight reps, you're gonna see a lot of gains. And that means you may need, as you get stronger, to be using 60, 70, 80, 90, maybe even 100 pound dumbbells. Like don't be afraid to go heavy on this motion as long as you're bracing your core, slacking out, keeping that nice spine where your, your head and your spine, your back's always in alignment and you're focusing on your core and your form the whole time. Now, I recommend you do train these twice per week if possible because you get a pulse, you recover a few days because you lifted heavy, and then you get another training pulse. So two times a week is great. You can spread that volume out. So maybe you do three sets on one day, three sets on the next day. That's it for the dumbbell deadlift. Do this. Super, super good. Let's move on to exercise two on our list of the best muscle building exercises after age 40. Exercise number two on our list for the upper body is the dumbbell bench press. And I'm gonna show you three varieties that I absolutely love because the dumbbell bench press is one of the best motions for the chest, the shoulders, the triceps, and in your integrating the core. Now, a lot of us, if we were lifting back in the days, have done a lot of barbell bench pressing, but the problem is that can be pretty tough on our shoulders and we don't always have access to a barbell and equipment like that at home, so that's where dumbbells come into play. So versatile, so many ways to do this. I'm gonna show you how to do the incline dumbbell bench press, which you can set a bench that's roughly around 30 degrees right here. This is a really cool variety. It's a mix up from doing flat bench press. And here's what I actually learned from the research and prep for this video. You don't want your bench too high for this. What they found is that a bench at roughly 30 degrees, so a low incline bench press, stimulates the upper chest and the chest the most, versus when you go into above 45 degrees into 60, you're really doing more of like a shoulder press hybrid. So it's not quite as good for your chest. If you want to target that area of like the shoulders plus the chest, feel free to have a high bench, but the low incline bench press, super phenomenal. 
phenomenal. Now here's another thing that's actually a trick that I love with the dumbbell bench press, is doing it on a slight decline. So I like to put a couple weight plates underneath the foot of the bench to give me a slight decline. What this does is actually opens up the shoulder girdle. If you ever feel like you have impingement and pain when you do dumbbell bench pressing, just getting on that slight decline opens up the shoulder, makes that pressing so much more natural. Now, as you're pressing and you're seeing me go ahead and do this, what you wanna do is make sure that you're squeezing the weights hard, pressing them both up away from your body, but also they're coming to midline. The dumbbells are touching and you're doing a deliberate squeeze. You lower down with a nice controlled count. I'd say one, 1,000, two, 1,000, pause, press. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, pause, press. That's a good tempo that works. You can play around with other kinds of tempos. I think it's better than just doing really fast reps because we know from muscle building research that you wanna have enough time under tension during a set. So let's say that you're doing dumbbell bench press in anywhere from the 10 rep range or so. If it takes you around three, four seconds for a, a, a rep, that means you're gonna get like 40 seconds of time under tension for a set, and that's pretty good. Versus if you just try to go as fast as possible, you might only be under tension for a short amount of time. So I think controlling that weight, really feeling it is very good. Now, I actually did a video on this recently, but I wanna include it again. My final version of the dumbbell bench press that I really love is called the archer press. So you can see me on a flat bench, what I'm doing is I'm doing one arm at a time. So my dumbbells start up at the top of the motion. Now I lower one and I glide open the other. So I'm doing like an archer pulling back a bow then I press back up to top. Then I do the other one, the arm glides out, pull. So not only is one, the arm that's coming down is getting that good stretch and working the pec, the arm that's in the upper position is also drifting outwards. This creates that cross body tension on the chest. It's absolutely amazing. Now in terms of sets and reps, again, this is another thing for a given workout. Fine to do any from three to five sets is just fine. Because more sets you do, you're getting diminishing returns. So really focus on quality of your sets here. And I think these are a thing you can train in the low rep range, anywhere from five to eight reps. And you can also get above 12, 15 reps. And I think it's a good idea to mix up the rep ranges you train on. Sometimes you're training very heavy and low rep. Sometimes you might have training blocks where you're going higher rep. Or you can do it, sometimes you have heavy days and sometimes you have lighter days. We lay all this out if you're interested inside our old school muscle building program that gives you light days, heavy day, moderate day. We have all that basically tabulated out in a plan to follow. Um, so three to, I'd say, five sets in that rep range twice per week, ideally. That's exercise number two. Let's move on to number three. All right, so exercise number three on our list of the best dumbbell exercise for muscle building is the two-arm dumbbell row. And I have two versions I wanna show you. The first one is like the classic. You have the dumbbells out in front of you, you're just standing on the ground, roughly shoulder width, and you address the dumbbells kind of like how you address a deadlift. You're still squeezing hard with your arms. And when you're rowing, it's really important that you start to build a good mind-muscle connection with your back. It's really easy to not use the back and rely too much on the arms. So I want you to mentally think of your arms as pulleys. And you pull, initiate that pull and that rowing motion from your shoulder blades and then your lats. And as you come to the top of the motion, you may even puff your chest out a little bit and squeeze that back and then slowly slowly lower the dumbbells. On the slow lowering, just make the intention to not let the dumbbells just straight drop. Control that eccentric for one to two seconds. Now, the standard uh, two-arm dumbbell row right out in front of you is great. You can also use kettlebells, which I love. Another good option in a neutral grip. Sometimes that feels good for a lot of people's shoulders. And I recommend you do this, I'd say, in a slightly higher rep range because it's really good time under tension exercise. So anywhere from, let's say, three to five sets in a given workout, working it from six to maybe up to 50 15 reps. You're absolutely going to be burning like crazy at 15 reps. Your back's going to really be feeling it. Now, there's another cool version of this. We're actually on an incline bench. So you put the bench at around a 45 degree incline, and this is a chest supported two arm dumbbell row. And basically this is similar. You're gonna be able to do, a, it's similar to the two arms just standing, but you're supported on the bench. You're really focusing on driving your feet into the ground and then pulling from your back. And you're in a slightly different pulling angle because you're pulling a little more in this upright position because of the bench, but focus on that squeeze at the top. The intention is at the top of the motion, Focus on the squeeze for about one second and then come down. And don't release the tension at the bottom. Feel and connect to your lats and feel that all the way through the motion with that good squeeze and lower. I think you're really gonna love this. And you can do both versions. You could do like two sets of just this classic one, two sets on the 45 degree incline bench. Both are great. Mix it up, use these wonderful motions. All it requires is a bench and a pair of dumbbells or just a pair of dumbbells. Let's get into the next motion. Exercise number four on our list is the dumbbell single leg split squat. 
As we get older, many of us experience pain in our knees, in our back, and it can be hard to train legs exactly the way we want to. And so I love this exercise because it's a way to absolutely stimulate your legs, quads, hammies, and glutes without going super heavy or needing to use crazy weight on your back or anything that could hurt you. So here's the deal. You're gonna need something to elevate your back foot. So this could be a bench, it could be a chair. You wanna get in a position just like this with that knees drop down. And now you want your front leg, the leg that's gonna be doing the work to be at roughly a 90 degree angle. And once you're in this established position that you see me in right here, you elevate with the dumbbells and you're in the perfect starting position. You pitch your core slightly forward onto that front leg so that weight's there and you descend and you really focus on working that single leg. And I think this is an exercise to go in a higher rep range. The legs really respond to a lot of high, high rep work. So try to do a set of 12, maybe up to 20 reps. Your leg should be burning. Your glute should be burning. And this is something you may only need two sets of. I think it's a great as a finisher, two sets of 15 to 20 reps at the end of a leg workout. If you wanna make this like the main staple mainstay of your workout, out, then I'd say three to four sets um, anywhere in like that 10 to 20 rep range. Absolutely phenomenal. Make sure to do both legs. And I'd say you do one leg, you might even want to rest for a good minute to 90 seconds before doing the other leg because this is cardiovascularly taxing too. It's one of those exercises just good for your overall fitness period. And it tends to be pretty easy on people's knees. And you can play around with your position and make sure it feels good for you. And you don't need to have a giant barbell on your back. So after 40, huge wins in my opinion. Let's get into the fifth and very fun exercise. Fun with a wink face. I think you're going to love this for growing your arms. Let's get into it. Exercise number five on our list is blood flow restriction training for the arms. So I don't know if you've heard of blood flow restriction training before, but the concept here is that muscle grows in two primary ways. One is mechanical stress. So we lift a really heavy weight, we create a lot of tension, there's some tearing because there's so much tension and we're trying to lift the weight, then the body compensates and responds. The other way is through metabolic stress. This is when we've just like put the muscle through so much work, so much lactic acid buildup, so much energy pathway production that all these metabolic byproducts that build up actually stimulate the body to build muscle. So this is the cool thing. With blood flow restriction training, you can use a really light weight with some modifications and create a profound metabolic stress that also leads to gains. And you could only use like 10 to 15 pound dumbbells to do this. So here's exactly how this works. So what you do is you wrap your arms with some kind of cuff. They actually have legit like cuffs for this, like katsu or blood pressure cuffs. You can also use some old squat wraps like I'm using here. You wrap your arms so it's tight. Not so tight that your arm is turning completely purple and it's gonna fall off, like be smart about this, but tight so that it's restricting blood flow. What we're trying to do is restrict the blood flow returning from your arm and now we're gonna to start to do curls. So once you wrap yourself up, you grab first some 10 or maybe 15 pound dumbbells and you start to curl. And I want you to do about 30 reps of curls and it is gonna be burning and screaming and that's the whole point. You're lifting a very light weight for a high number of repetitions. After about 30 curls, you put the dumbbells down, take a few deep breaths for around 15 seconds or so, 20 seconds, shake your arms out a little bit, the cuffs stay on the whole time, pick the dumbbells back up, curl again for around 15 to 20 reps. After 15 and 20 reps, put the weights down, shake out a little bit, cuffs stay on, breathe, do it again for another 15 to 20 reps. I want you to do the main set of 30 and then three subsequent sets of 15 to 20 reps. By the end of this, that set time should be around three or four minutes. Your arms are gonna be screaming. You're gonna be so happy to take those blood pressure cuffs off. But I'll tell you, you just do one set of this, it's going to create a powerful stimulus for you to build muscle on your arms. Another thing I love about this is you get that stimulus, but it's not like you were having to curl 100 pound dumbbells. So if you wanna go train the next couple days and do different kinds of things, do like a back day, but still train arms to get more arm volume, it's a great way to slot it in. And you can use super light weights. What I like to do is probably do one set for biceps and then one set for triceps. So I'll do the curls. And for triceps, I often do like a diamond push up or a rope cable press down with this. They're all great options in terms of how you can do the tricep work. You can also get crazy and do a set of biceps immediately into a set of triceps. That's a little more advanced, but you can hit the whole arm in around three to four minutes using blood flow restriction training. This is something that could be a cool tool in your arsenal. A lot of athletes use this. A lot of people in physical therapy use this. I want you to know about it. But again, I'm not saying you should do this, especially if you have any cardiovascular issues, history of stroke, you're on medications that may impact bleeding. We're literally restricting blood flow in the arm as we're doing this. So there are some dangers associated with the technique, but it straight up works. 
Very effective, very well researched, and I want you to know about it. So you can do this whole thing as a straight up workout. If you want to train full body twice a week, you can start with a dumbbell deadlift. You can move into a version of the dumbbell bench press, the two arm row, single leg squat with the, with the foot back, and then end with some blood flow restriction training. Do that twice per week, eat a healthy diet, walk, and maybe do a day of some cardio, and holy crap, you're gonna get in much better shape just straight up doing that. If you already have a strength training plan that you like, then just start to incorporate these exercises in. I'd say sprinkle them in throughout the week. Do all of these. These aren't the only best exercises, but these are some damn good ones. And you can do it at home. And if you continue to progressively resist, lift heavier weights over time, focus on your form, you will get stronger. And as you get stronger, you'll be building muscle. As you're building muscle, you're gonna feel so better about this whole process. It's a good, good cycle that kicks in. Hope you enjoyed this. And if you want a completely done for you muscle building plan, Join our Fit Father and Fit Mother programs and communities. We have programs straight up for fat loss and all the workouts. We have programs straight up for muscle building. We give you the nutrition plan, recommendations on supplements, and it's all designed for people over 40, busy moms and dads. So please join us. You're gonna love what you see and you're gonna love your results even more. This is Dr. A signing off. So grateful to serve you with this video. I'll see you around our channels and I'll talk to you very soon.